For the first time in the history of the city, multiple incumbents were defeated in the preliminary elections for Boston City Council. That includes Ricardo Arroyo, who lost his fifth district seat, representing Roslindale, Hyde Park, and parts of Mattapan. Next month, Enrique Pepin will go head-to-head -head with Jose Ruiz for the job. Enrique is the former executive director of the Office of Neighborhood Services for Boston Mayor Michelle Wu. Thanks for joining me today, Enrique. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, just to start off, can you give our viewers, uh, 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 tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Why are you running for this seat? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm a son of immigrants that decided to come to Boston to start a home here. And my sense of gratitude to the city of Boston, of growing up in the Boston public housing and learning how to swim at a, at a public pool, learning how to read at the library, I said, you know what, I want to give back. And now I'm raising my own two kids in Rosendale with my wife. And I see an opportunity here to truly give back to the same families that have the same story that my parents had and make Boston a better place to live for them. Well, you do have a compelling background. My colleagues at the at the Globe editorial board, um, it, partly that's why they they chose to endorse you um, in in the preliminary race. Um, you know, but uh, I wanted to ask you about the issues uh, that we discussed. Um, you know, when you came to the Globe, um, on on on, for example, transit. Um, what are your plans for the city? Where do you think the city uh, needs to work when it comes to transportation needs? Yeah, absolutely. It's no surprise that congestion is a huge issue in the city of Boston. But more specifically in the district, when I'm door knocking, all I hear is people are concerned about street safety, about the speeding vehicles. I want to see more implementations from the administration of bringing in speed humps, stop signs, better right, risen crosswalks so that when pedestrians are crossing the street, when as a parent our kids are playing in the sidewalks, we don't fear that they may get hit by a speeding vehicle, which has happened already, unfortunately, on Wood Ave in High Park a few months ago. So that's what I'm hearing. I want to make sure that residents feel like they can go outside and have reliable transportation, but also feel safe. Do you support, for example, um, you know, more, more bus lanes and bike lanes, for example, on Center Street in West Roxbury? I do. Yeah. I do. Why? Because that, that leads to a safe mode of transportation, as I just mentioned, not just for the people that are driving the vehicles, but those that have to rely on bus service. Mm -hmm. We forget that, on average, a person of, you know, a black or brown person spends more than 64 hours per year on a bus due to traffic. So by implementing these bus lanes, we are giving them back hours of their life that they can use. Yeah. How do you balance that? How do you balance people's, uh, you know, the community's voices? Um, you know, oftentimes a lot of people come out in opposition for this. The voices who are often heard are opposed to bike lanes. You know, how do you balance, um, you know, community participation with actually getting this done in a reasonable amount of time so it doesn't drag on for a few years every time you want to prop up some street safety yeah. program? As someone that's running for office and I, I'm listening to perspectives on all aisles of the spectrum, it's very evident I won't be able to please everyone. But as long as we're leading toward a city that is going to be inclusive and equitable, even when we're talking about transportation, I think that that's the end goal here. I want to make sure that we are not fearing for our life about losing our life on, on Washington Street, on River Street, on Blue Hill Avenue in Mattapan. But also that when you're waiting for that 34 bus on Washington Street, you know that you're going to get to school on time. You're going to get to work on time, to the clinic. Because people, my, as, when I was growing up in Boston, we would take the 93 bus in Charlestown to go to downtown or to go across the city to the health center in Jamaica Plain. That's, what, that's how I lived, and I'm pretty sure that that's the story of many Bostonians. Well, let's talk a little bit about public safety. Um, you know, the city council recently approved the grants for the Boston Regional Intelligence Center, or BRIC as it's often called. That's, you know, where the quote-unquote gang database um, is stored. Um, you know, the mayor uh, supported that measure to um, approve those grants. I believe it was somewhere around $3 million, $3.4 million um, in federal grants. Um, would you have supported that measure? Do you, would you have supported, uh, you know, funding those grants for, or, or, or approving those grants for a brick? You know, that's a good question, and it makes me think of why I decided to run. I want to make sure that when I'm getting into office in January as an ex-counselor, it's about being solution-minded. It's about looking at something like the brick and say, what is the issue at the moment? I want to make sure that we are pushing for more transparency and accountability from the police because unfortunately there is a lot of distrust of how those funds may be used. Yeah. But I also see that there's an opportunity here to use those funds to actually do good with it, but by, by holding PPD accountable. 
I want to make sure that we're looking at what's possible here. And so, you know, do you think the gang database, for example, do you, do, do you believe that should be abolished? The incumbent right now, Councillor Arroyo, you know, he, when he ran for DA, and he's made this an issue of his campaign in the past, that he believes the gang database should be abolished, should be scrapped entirely. Is that something that you would support? You know, when I think about who live in my district and the conversation that I have, the biggest topic at the moment is public safety. As someone that grew up in public housing, during the times of a large gang um, presence at the Charleston Public Housing, it was evident that families wanted change. And I want to look at the brick as an opportunity. Um, not that it, it has been passed, so we're going to have those funding there. I want us to be able to use them appropriately. So to be sure, you don't want to roll back the gang database or you don't want to completely scrap it. You wouldn't advocate for that. I want to take this as an opportunity. Now that it's been approved, I want to make sure that the city is using it wisely. Okay. So increase transparency, but not necessarily exactly. uh, scrap it. Exactly. Okay. Um, so I wanted to ask you about, about Mayor Wu. Um, obviously, uh, you worked in her administration. Um, how do you evaluate your former boss? I mean, you know, one of your jobs as city councilor, um, should you be elected, would be uh, to be a check on the mayor. Um, you know, where do you think she's fallen short in the last two years, and what would you like to push her on as a councilor? You know, as a city councilor in a city like Boston, your job is to make sure that we're holding whoever the mayor is accountable. If it's Mayor Wu, previous Mayor Walsh, Mayor Menino, you name it. I want to go in there and look at her and say, listen, my district is asking for these things, such as the transportation policies that they're asking for, because at the moment they feel like she's falling short on that. I also want to make sure that we're fixing our BPS budget. There's a lot of parents in my district with young kids that feel like BPS is failing them. So I want to make sure that I'm pushing her on that to make sure that we're bringing those resources to the city, to my district, because at, that, at this moment, families feel like more can be done. And I'm ready to hold her accountable and work with her and administration to make that possible. How do you feel about her plan for the O'Brien School? You know, as a former, city, as a former senior class president of the O'Brien, it's, it's such an interesting conversation because I know how I feel as a student that Roxbury is the heart of, this, of, of that school. The reason why I fell in love with that school is because it was in Roxbury. But if the mayor decides to go forward with this, you know, I want to make sure that the biggest concerns are taken care of, which well, is transportation. Yeah. Well, we are running out of time. I would have loved to ask you a lot more questions. Um, but I want to thank you for, for joining us today, and good luck on the campaign. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Enrique.